see you there. Wow, it's it's been so long I didn't even recognize you. <laughs> All silliness aside, hello, my name is Sonnet, and it's been a minute since I have filmed a YouTube video. And so today we're just going to crochet and have a little chat about things that have been going on in the summertime for me, as well as plans moving forward with YouTube and Twitch and all that good stuff. We're going to be chatting about crochet. We're going to be chatting about, you know, other things, life, things that have been going on over the summertime, why I decided to take a little break from YouTube. And while chatting, I'm going to be working on a present for my husband. So on the day that this video actually comes out, August 17th, that is my seven year wedding anniversary. And I love to make my husband gifts surrounding the traditional anniversary gifts. And I always make them. I always, always make them. So one year I did like a wooden portrait for wood. Another one I did, I made a pillow if it was cotton, you know, that kind of stuff. Well, what do you know? Year seven, the traditional anniversary gift is wool. <laughs> well, easy peasy. <laughs> Don't need to rack my brain with what I'm going to use wool for. Um, in fact, I'm going to be crocheting, of course. But I'm not just gonna be crocheting any little thing. Oh no. Back in December, I made my husband one sock for Christmas. <laughs> one sock. I try and make him socks every Christmas, but let me tell you, once you're done with the first sock, you don't want to do that second one. No, I wanted to move on. And so for, I gave him one sock for Christmas <laughs> and for months and months and months, he has begged me, begged me for his other sock. I did it. <laughs> I, I finally crocheted him his other sock. So these were the Christmas ones. Um, and this is using the, hmm, uh, Christmas Sock Wool by um, Hobby. I can't remember the name of this colorway. Uh, as you know, they don't list their names on the tag, which is kind of unfortunate. This one just says color six, so I don't know. Uh, but here's his Christmas socks. I don't think I'm going to use the sock wool again from Hobby. I don't know. I just, it's fine. It's kind of, I don't know. It's okay. It's not my favorite, but anyways, I finished his sock, so thank goodness, but I'm crazy. And not only did I tell myself, you know what, I'm gonna finish my husband's Christmas socks for our anniversary, <laughs> but I'm going to make him a whole nother pair. So we will be seeing Wicked on stage for our anniversary. I'm really excited. My husband is over the moon. He has seen Wicked long time ago, and he is so excited for me to see Wicked. I've never seen it. And he, he's just, he can't wait. And so I am really excited. We're going to get all dressed up. And so I thought he would like a new pair of socks for his little nice dressed up outfit. So I finished one already and I am going to be crocheting the second one while I chat with you guys. Now, just in case you were interested, this colorway here was a sock collection from Hue Loco. I love Hue Loco. Hue Loco is such an amazing yarn company and they're local here in Colorado. So it's like extra points because I love, you know, supporting local companies. This was their coffee house collection. I believe this came out last year but don't quote me on that. It could have been this year and maybe time just held still for a couple months. I don't know. This year has been wild, but this was their coffee house collection. And this particular color way was the chai latte, which is so gorgeous. Oh my gosh. I had to get this one just because one, I love like browns and things, but I love a chai latte. I don't know what it is, just going to a coffee shop, especially like the local one around me and getting a chai latte. Oh, it's so delicious. And it is almost chai season where it's getting cooler. Well, not around here, it's still boiling hot, but hopefully it gets cooler soon. 
the autumn season is coming and oh my gosh, I can't wait. Anyways, so this is the chai latte colorway and then it did c include two other colors because it was a sock collection. And yeah, I highly recommend you check out Hue Loco, amazing hand dyed yarn. And I just love it. I think it is so nice. I think the sock is great and it's gonna look perfect on our anniversary. Well, hopefully he wears them. Maybe he won't, I don't know. Also, in case you are interested, this sock pattern is a pattern from Alt Knots, and I have only made this sock pattern and it's great. And I use the Ribbler one, so it's really nice and interactive. And so it helps me keep track of all the rows and things like that. So I do highly recommend that pattern. It is pretty, pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and scoop back here. Hopefully like my mic still picks me up. Today we're drinking some iced coffee because it's already hot and oh something about iced coffee in the morning when you're like working on crochet projects nothing is oh bless you that's my doggy oh no <laughs> are you all right is everything okay oh that's my doggy zoe she's an old 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 lady <laughs> but she's still so great. <laughs> okay, so what have I been doing the past couple of months? Where have I been? Well, if you didn't see my Discord or my Instagram or Storygraph, not Storygraph, Threads, so many social media profiles. If you didn't see those posts, basically my kiddo is on summer vacation from school and because she is still pretty young, when she is home from school, we spend every moment together and it was just pretty hard to find the time to actually film YouTube videos or to do a Twitch stream or anything like that. So I decided that it was going to be best for her, best for myself, and best for our family in general if I just took the summer off and had kind of a little break. And it was such a busy summer. We did something pretty much every single day of the summer and it was it was pretty crazy. My local library has a really cool summer reading adventure that we do every year. And so there's a ton of programs they do throughout the week. So we were at about two library programs a week. Then also they do a story time on Wednesdays, which was really nice for my kiddo because it kind of really still you know, she would sit and listen to the story. There were other kids to play with. So it was just a little bit of nice structure for her to kind of remind her of that kind of school setting. So we would do that on Wednesdays. Plus, in addition, I do teach cricket classes at my local library. And so I was at my library like pretty much every day this summer. It was it was pretty crazy, but it was great. It was awesome. It was really fun. In addition to you know, hanging out at the library, we spent a ton of time outside. So I used to be way into gardening, but I actually haven't had a garden for about six years now. And that's simply because I had a young child and I just did not have the energy to care for a little child as well as care for a garden and everything as well. So I hadn't gardened in a long time, but this year was different. I finally felt like, okay, I can do this. And so I had so much fun gardening this summer. I started a little herb garden, which was amazing. And I grew a ton of mint and my chamomile plant. Oh my gosh. I've been plucking the little chamomile flowers as I see them and storing them in a brown bag to make my own chamomile tea. And let me tell you, when I open up this brown bag of drying chamomile, it's the most amazing smell. Oh my gosh. It is so great. I also have a little flower garden that has roses and some petunias and other kind of more simple flowers. That one, it doesn't take a lot of maintaining, but it's still pretty there kind of by my patio. So uh, that's fun. And then I also have a tomato garden where I started growing about six different varieties of tomatoes, as well as about six different varieties of peppers because 
because let's be real, I live in Colorado and the summers are hot and hot. <laughs> and hot and dry. So I needed something that did well in the heat and I don't have a ton of shade in my backyard. So I needed something that did well in sunshine. And so the peppers, they've been going crazy. My jalapenos this year, oh, very hot. <laughs> but what about crochet, right? A lot of you are here about crochet. What have I been doing crochet wise? Well, to be honest, not a lot. <laughs> I did make four different little cuties that I don't want to talk about just yet. That is next week's video. So what I decided to do, much like my The Good, The Bad, and the Amigurumi series, I'm going to do a series where I get, you know, three to four, maybe five, depending on the size uh, patterns from one particular designer. And talk about that designer and their patterns and these are specifically designers that don't necessarily have a book out there's a lot of great amigurumi books out there but there are amazing amazing amigurumi designers out there who don't have a book and so i do want to highlight some of them unlike the good the bad and the amigurumi these videos probably won't have much criticism in there just because I love these designers and I love these patterns. It's just gonna be a series where I talk about this designer, I talk about the amigurumi that I make and how much I love them and why I recommend them. And hopefully you can find some designers that you really enjoy as well. So that video is coming out next week, I can't wait. I've been filming that video for three months. I know that sounds crazy, but I have. Everything else that I have been crocheting lately besides the socks are really for projects that I can't talk about yet. I'm really excited to talk about them, but I can't talk about them yet. And information on those projects are going to be coming soon. So just keep an eye out. That is a collaboration that I can't wait to talk about. But also this summer, I've been working really hard on another yarny kind of collaboration. It's not crochet necessarily, but it is very crochet yarn and knitting focused. You guys, I am so excited about this project. I am so excited about this collaboration. I cannot wait to show you guys what I have been sketching up. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Whew. Once information is available about that collaboration, I will definitely be sharing with you my portion of the collaboration. And I just, oh, I'm so excited. One thing that's been kind of a bummer about the summer being so busy when it comes to crochet is typically in the summer of July, I like to have a summer ween crochet month where I crochet only spooky Halloween weird amigurumis but I didn't get a chance to do that this year, which is unfortunate. And I am getting a little anxious because my October craft fair is coming up really soon. And I haven't really started to make a ton of Halloween and spooky offerings for that one, but <sighs> I just gotta get through this week. Can I just say, as an adult, I felt like my life has been a constant cycle of me telling myself, I just got to get through this week and then things will slow down. I just got to get through this month and then things will get slowed down. I just got to get through the next four hours and then things will slow down. And then guess what? Spoiler alert, it never slows down. <laughs> that has been a constant cycle in my life since I can remember. <laughs> but no, after I finish the crochet collaboration that I'm doing, after I finish this kind of yarny artsy collaboration that I'm doing, and once I finish the socks, which we're getting there, we should be able to finish the sock today, woohoo! I should be able to put all of my focus into my October market, really focus on making those spooky Halloween and weird amigurumi offerings for that market. And yeah, it's gonna be excellent. I need to start getting caught up on crochet YouTube as well, cause I'm gonna be 100% honest, I really wasn't on YouTube at all this summer. I, I don't know, I just, I really wasn't on social media in general. I put down all of it. 
and I just I spent time with my kiddo I spent time with my husband and I spent time outside and I spent a lot of time reading and so I actually have fallen really behind on a lot of people's videos and my gosh I it's only been like two months since I posted a YouTube video and I come back to YouTube and crochet YouTube I feel is so different just in the past two months it's really quite wild and I don't know <laughs> how to I don't know but I am excited to keep going so going forward what is my main focus for the channel well I don't know I want it to be authentic to me because I mean if it's not what's the point right but at the same time i want to make videos that you guys are interested in so i do plan to continue on with the good the bad and the amigurumi series i have a book already lined up that i'm going to be doing next which i'm really excited for i actually have the next three books lined up which is really funny poor lula and her amigurumi friends like that was going to be the next one back in march and she just keeps getting pushed and pushed aside. That book is amazing. However, those patterns are so detailed and intricate and just massive that they're a little overwhelming. And I know that making like four of those characters is going to take me forever so <laughs> uh i keep pushing that one back hopefully we get to lula and her amazing amigurumi friends soon that's what's going on with that i have the next three lined up that i want to do uh so those should be coming soon if you have any recommendations for books that you would like to see me review for the good the bad and the amigurumi please as always be sure to list them down below now i am going to go ahead and put the sock down for a minute because i do want to talk about some of the new amigurumi books that I have acquired over the summertime. There's not a lot of them, but I did want to talk about them anyways, so here we go. The first one isn't just amigurumi, but I wanted to share it with you anyways because I found this at my local thrift store and I thought it was so cute. Oh my gosh. So this is Adventure Time Crafts, flip and adorable stuff to make from the land of... <laughs> okay, so confession, I've only ever watched Adventure Time while I was getting tattooed because my tattoo artist has it on sometimes. And let's be real, while I'm getting tattooed, I'm not paying like, you know, extreme attention to what's going on on the TV. <laughs> so from the little things that I've seen while I was getting tattooed, I think it's good, right? And people love it, but I'm, I don't know a ton about it. But I decided to get it anyways because one, it was like two bucks and it's really adorable. Some of these projects are so cute and there's a really wide variety of projects in this book. So this is from Princess Bonnabelle Bubblegum uh, with Chelsea Bloxham as well. And I believe it's actually a mixture of kind of craft designers and things. I don't know. It's just really cute. There's some really adorable projects in here. And I know that there's a lot of Adventure Time fans out there. I know it's extremely popular and well loved. So I decided to pick it up because it was so inexpensive but then there are some crochet projects in here these are the crochet homies cozies so I saw these and I know a few people who would probably really enjoy something like this so these are gonna be great for gifts and things I don't know I just I saw it it was a really good price the projects were super cute and I decided to pick it up so that is adventure time crafts so the next two books are really no surprise that I picked up over the past couple of months. And the first one is Colorful Crochet Birds. This is a book by Ilaria Kaliri. And oh my gosh. So I don't think I have ever done any of their patterns, but they are so well known and loved in the Amigurumi community that I just, I had to pick up this book. And I mean, the birds are adorable. Plus Meteor Books does the really cool thing where you can pre-order the book and you get the digital PDF instantly. And then they send you the book in the mail a few 
weeks or months later. And I just love that. I love having a digital but a physical copy at the same time for the price of one. I think it's great. And then each one also does come with an adorable postcard. Oh, I just love that they do this. So every time they have their pre-orders, I'm snagging it because the Meteor books are some of my favorite ones. The designers are great. I love how they're set up. And one of my favorite things that they do that I know a lot of Amigurumi books do, and that is the page that has all of the Amigurumi on it. So that way I can just flip to one page in the book, see which Amigurumi, oopsie, <laughs> see which Amigurumi I want to crochet. And then I can flip through that page. So much easier, so much more fun, much easier to plan plan than to just kind of constantly be flipping through the book trying to find one that appeals to me. But this little toucan, he's got to be number one. Absolutely. So cute. I haven't cracked this one open yet, but I do hope to soon. So yeah, that is Colorful Crochet Birds by Ilaria Kaliri. Also from Meteor Books, oh my gosh, Aquatic Amigurumi 2. Ha! You guys know I love the first one so much. I love that Amigurumi book. I love Natasha Tyshchenko's patterns. I think they are so wonderful and unique and colorful and just amazing. So when I found out there was going to be a second one, and then of course Meteor Books did the pre-order with the PDF and then the physical book, absolutely jumped onto that one just amazing. I love the colors of this book. I love the colors of these Amigurumis. I love the designs of all of them. Amazing. Once again, you get that amazing postcard, which is so cute. And on the postcard is the Amigurumi that I'm most excited to do. And that is that hammerhead shark. Perfect. He is amazing. Again, it has the page with all of the amigurumi you can do, so you can look and plan and pick which amigurumi your next project is going to be. And I just love the little stories that Natasha gives all of the characters. If you are a amigurumi designer and you do this, thank you. All of the amigurumi that have like little backstories, I just eat it up. I love it. So if you do that, thank you. Keep doing it. It makes me so happy to read these little stories of these characters. And while I'm crocheting, I then feel like I know these characters and I connect with them more because they have these adorable little stories. Once again, haven't dived into this one either, but I can't wait to make some more of these beautiful aquatic amigurumi. One thing I would say about these patterns is they're not whip them up in a day type of patterns. These ones definitely do take a little bit more time. They definitely do take a little bit more patience and know-how. So if you are a beginner, wouldn't necessarily recommend this book. However, if you love detailed and time-consuming amigurumi like I do, then this one is definitely a must. I also picked up Wonderful World of Amigurumi by Kake. So Kake is just one of those designers as well where Everything is so cute. Everything is so cute and so creative. I mean, that little platypus, look at it with his little fish bag and his lemon hat. Oh my gosh, so cute. This book also does have the page with all of the amigurumi on there. Again, you can pick which one you wanna put on your hook first. Lucas the boar as well. I think I saw that little boar and I knew that I had to get this book because what a unique kind of character. Let's be real, we've seen a million bees. There, I have a lot of bee patterns in my collection. Don't think I have a boar. Don't think I have a boar in my collection, but now I do, thanks to Kuk K. Oh my gosh, really excited about these ones. Kuk K's patterns are really wonderful and well-loved as always, so I was really excited to pick this one up. Now, the last Amigurumi book that I picked up was actually a recommendation from a viewer in a comment. And when I went to look it up, I saw this book and I said, okay, I have to have that. <laughs> And that is Amigurumi Style Crochet by Cara Medus. Oh, wow. 
<laughs> so this book, you make one doll. Her name is Betty. She does have removable hair because, I mean, a girl's got to change up her hair, right? I think I know a little bit about that. And then the book also contains a collection of wardrobe for Betty. Plus, the book also contains some adorable little accessories like her radio, her handbags, and then, of course, her cat, Bert, and all of his outfits and things just so cute. So in this book, you do get quite a few patterns and they are based off of different outfits. So you have the base Betty pattern. Then you have Betty at a Betty at home dress. You have a couple of dresses for Betty at the movies. I mean, she looks glamorous, doesn't she? Um, also, Betty goes on holiday. You have this adorable travel outfit as well as her bathing suit. Can I just say, Betty, your holiday travel outfit, perfect. <laughs> I'm going on a vacation in February and I told myself while I was looking through this, I was like, that is the outfit that I'm wearing on the plane. Absolutely, you are a style icon, Betty. It also contains the patterns for Betty's boudoir. So you have this adorable little baby doll nighty, and then a corset, which is super cute. Uh, also, Betty goes dancing, fabulous. And then Betty goes shopping because who doesn't like to shop? And once again, Bert has all of his little accessories and things so cute. Now, the style of this Betty doll is not one that I typically gravitate towards. I usually make dolls that are a little bit more, I don't know, like childish, playful, baby doll looking, where Betty is constructed a little bit differently. But even though she's not my typical style, I just, I had to get this one. The the 50s housewife type of theme as well as all of the little accessories and stuff that go along with it i just i had to have it so cute i love it mm, i can't wait to work up some of betty's outfits and little bert down there too cute so that's it for the crochet talk uh, we'll just talk about a couple of things uh before the end here and the first one is well i guess you might have noticed a little bit of a location change up i'm still in my craft room but i did decide to change up my craft room. I did decide to paint my craft room and this was like a month long project. This took me forever to do. And so I changed everything up a little bit. I painted uh, two of my walls this beautiful green color, which is great. I also redid my yarn shelf over here. If you remember the old one was like a very light, you know, light wood, but I didn't like it anymore and I didn't think it would look great with the green. So rather than buy a new shelf, I just bought a roll of wood looking sticky contact paper and I resurfaced basically my whole shelf. At the end of that project, um, the amount of time it took me to actually repurpose that shelf, I would have been better off just buying a new shelf. Uh, let's be real, these like Calyx shelves from Ikea, you can find them on Marketplace for, you know, pretty cheap all the time. Um, <laughs> but it was still fun. I still had a really good time kind of revamping my craft room. I was going to do a whole vlog on it, but I don't know, it just, I felt like it was kind of boring. <laughs> so if that is a vlog that you want to see, um, just let me know and I can throw that together. But as of now, yeah, this is my new craft room. I'm super happy with it. I made a stained glass window on my window over here, which turned out beautiful. It is my favorite part of my craft room now. Oh, it looks so good. But yeah, that's it. So going forward, again, what's coming up on the channel next week, we have our review of a pattern designer who I'm so excited to talk about. I can't wait to share these amigurumi with you guys. I will be sharing some of the patterns that I will be making for Halloween, as well as sharing with you my top Halloween picks for amigurumi patterns. That video is coming out soon because let's see, school is in session right school is here it is spooky season i mean it's always spooky season here for me but you know 
If you're interested in any market prep vlogs, let me know. If there's any videos you do want to see from me, just let me know. If you like these more chatty videos, let me know. If you hate these kind of videos, let me know. Just let me know down in the comments what you want to see from this channel, what interests you the most. Of course, the good, the bad, and the amigurumi is in the works. Those videos do take me a long time to make those, so yeah, just hang in there. I did want to say thank you so much to all of you. It's, it's really kind of stressful <laughs> to be gone from, you know, a platform for even just a couple of months and then come back. It really is. I feel like the new kid on the block again. And I just, you guys are always so wonderful and supportive and kind. And I just want you guys to know that I really do think you are amazing. I really do appreciate all of the comments that I get. Even if we disagree on things, there's a lot of times we disagree on books or we disagree on, you know, some crochet hot takes, but everyone is still so kind and understanding and respectful. And I just think you guys are amazing. We're gonna keep this little crochet corner over here full of love and respect and kindness. And I just, I really do appreciate every single one of you. And I really do value your opinions. So if you do have anything that you wanna see or not see, please let me know. So we made about 13 rows of the foot of the sock. I still got a ways to go uh, to match this one, but you know, we'll power through that and the socks will be ready for my anniversary, which is so exciting. But that's all I have to say about that. Thank you so much for being here today. You are so wonderful. I love you so much. I have missed you so much and I will see you all a little later. Bye.